Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and this is my credibility bookshelf. Today I want to talk about the phenomenon that might be familiar to you if you watch booktube videos on a regular basis, but was completely new to the rest of the world in about March 2020, when all of a sudden all we saw on television news was people and their bookcases. This very quickly became a meme. There's a whole Twitter account dedicated to analyzing people's bookcases on the news. I'll link that in the description box below. Definitely check that out. It is absolutely hilarious. And I remember this moment. That was my cats having a fight. I remember this moment in about mid-March when I noticed that television was looking a lot like my YouTube subscription feed. All of a sudden, I could see celebrities' bookcases, politicians' bookcases, virus experts on the news bookcases, and it made me feel so seen. Joking aside though, I noticed that the conversation around the aesthetics of books that has been going on uh, on book-related social media for a while suddenly became part of the mainstream conversation. And I loved that. I remember a TV interview with British politician Lisa Nandy where you could tell she was clearly desperately trying to find a corner in her house that had decent enough lighting and decent enough Wi-Fi to conduct a TV interview. And she ended up right next to a window in what looked like her attic and there was a single book on the windowsill and it was Catch-22. And then the next time that I saw her being interviewed on the news, all of a sudden she was in a living room with decent lights and a bookcase in the background. Another British politician, a member of the government cabinet, uh, Michael Gove, caused some controversy when his bookcase showed, how do I phrase this without offending Tories? I don't really care about offending Tories a worrying amount of books about dictatorships and dictators on his bookcase. And then there were the celebrities uh, who got judged for not having any books in the background of their interviews. So all of a sudden, people were starting to be judged by the bookcases that you could see in the background of their media appearances. And let me tell you, this is something that's not new to booktubers and bookstagrammers. Do you remember the conversation that went on and presumably still is going on about how supposedly shallow it is for people on social media to organize their books by color instead of alphabetically by author surname? As someone who organizes her books alphabetically by author surname, I was already fed up of the underlying misogyny of that discussion about how other people organize their books as if it's any of your business. Women on social media have always been criticized for displaying books in their photos and videos and accused that book display being just for show and there's no way that they've read those books. There's also a similar conversation going around antique books, you know, pretty leather bound editions. Hang on, I got one of them. That sort of a thing sleek and leathery and classy looking. These accusations of these books being just for show and there's no way you're reading all of these. There's two things wrong with that argument. I feel like I don't really have to go through that, but just for the completeness of it. First of all, you don't know what other people are reading or not reading. And second of all, why do you care if someone buys a book because it's pretty? and doesn't actually intend to read it. Why should it bother me if someone else buys a complete set of leather-bound first edition Ian Forster novels, something that, that I would probably chop my hair off to get hold of in my life? Why should I care if someone else buys them and puts them on their shelf and then doesn't actually read them? It, it doesn't bother me because it's none of my business. We saw this kind of judgment uh, from a picture of Kate Middleton, uh, Princess Catherine, Duchess of, you know who I'm talking about. She uh, posted a, a, a photo of her at her desk and she had all of these 
Penguin Classics editions in front of her and people were being judgmental meanies and talking about how there's no way she's ever read them, look at them, they look completely unread. Why do you care so much about other people's reading habits? It really shouldn't matter. But I find it so fascinating that this discussion that I've observed for years online has now made it onto the mainstream because celebrities are affected by it. And I love the creative ways that people on television have been dealing with this. So some of them have, and I'm not sure if it's ironically or seriously, just decided to green screen their interviews and their TV appearances and just put a picture of a bookcase behind them. Love that, very creative. And then there's some that have uh, used their bookcase background to communicate little hidden messages. Also love that. And then there's some people who have just like, you know, taken a piece of paper and like drawn a bookcase on it and stuck that to the wall behind them or similar things. I'm just really enjoying the discourse around the aesthetics of the credibility bookcase. And I haven't even touched upon the whole name of the credibility bookcase. Why is it that books have become such a popular background for media appearances and interviews? It's in the name, right? Books lend you credibility because even if you never intend to read them, just the idea of someone owning a book communicates a message of education and of someone who knows what they're talking about. And as any booktuber knows, just having books in the background of your videos doesn't mean you know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. And I've got like 61 books right there. I have to be honest about myself. I mostly look through the Bookcase Credibility Twitter account to be insanely jealous of all of these beautiful bookcases with all of the beautiful books in all of these beautiful living rooms that I can only dream about. And then there is the joy of watching the television news, which obviously isn't very joyful most of the time, and then recognizing a book on someone's bookcase. And you're like, hmm, I didn't know she read that. I've read that. I wonder if she liked it. Before I finish this video, I just want to bring your attention to the topic of sending messages with your bookcase. I've already spoken about the whole Michael Gove controversy, and I'm not sure what kind of message he was trying to send with his bookcase, but um, just recently in the news there was the hilarious story of Boris Johnson's background bookcase. The Prime Minister of this country, Boris Johnson, recently gave an interview in a school, I believe it was a primary school, and he gave the interview in the library, presumably because he thought that the bookcase behind him would lend him credibility. But little did he know that the books were arranged in such a way that they communicated quite a dystopian and quite an angry message. So then when that interview aired, there was a lot of speculation about who arranged the books in that way, because it certainly wasn't Boris. It turned out that the choice of books with their loud and clear message of anger and oppression was actually down to the previous school librarian who was sacked from her job and in anger, as a kind of a leaving message, had arranged those books in that particular way on that specific wall. But it wasn't discovered until months later when the Prime Minister gave an interview in front of that bookcase. And if that isn't a credibility bookcase, I don't know what is. That was it for me. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of the credibility bookcase trend. If you are an avid watcher of booktube, then I'm sure you're familiar with all of these arguments, with the people arguing about whether books should be for aesthetics or not. So let me finish with this. I like my bookcase sorted alphabetically by author surname, but I have absolutely no opinion on people who organize their books by color. I don't even care if people put their books with the pages facing. People get so outraged about that trend on social media. Why? If it makes you happy, if you don't want to look at the spines of your books, you do you. 
I don't care if you use your bookcase to display an aesthetic ideal. I don't care if you use your bookcase to send secret messages to the nation. I don't care if you use your bookcase for your Funko Pops and nothing else. Bookcases are such a personal thing and they show personality. And I've just loved seeing so many more people's personality shine through their bookcase or in fact the absence of a bookcase on the television news lately. Let me know your opinion on this in the comments down below. Be respectful. I would like you to share with me your favourite credibility bookcase that you spotted on TV. I think mine has to be Stephen Fry who seems to live in an actual magical library and when I saw his library I could barely contain the drooling. Sorry for that image at the end of my video but let me know your favourites and your opinion on the credibility bookcase in general. Thank you for watching. Bye!